Valley Church. Hope for those who have given up on church. All right, well, welcome back to our app groups. Um, we are starting a new sermon series this week. Uh, you should have heard the series opener of ProVision, um, talking about structure and how structure um, or vision in our lives um, propels us into the future. In, in the series, um, Jerry, one of the things Jerry talked about was um, following God's plan brings joy. He talked about how he, he spent some time on this, how when we follow God, when we do what God asks us to do, it brings joy. And that's what I want to spend um, some time into. I want to dig a little further into that in this app group study. And we're going to base this out of Psalm 119, verses 1 to 3. This is a great, uh, I love uh, Psalm 119. It talks about the love of God's word and his, his, um, his commandments and what he has for us. And so if you get a chance, read Psalm 119. The whole thing is, is great, but we're just going to uh, focus on these first three verses. And it says, Joyful are people of integrity, who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. Um, I've entitled this, this study, uh, Joy is Following. You know, one of the things in life, you know, uh, in, in our culture, it's all about being number one. It's about being um, the alpha dog and, you know, ju just be being the guy in charge. Well, that's great as long as there's someone else above that. And, of course, that's God. Um, we need God to lead us. And, and sometimes in that it, wanting to be our own person and making our own way and all of that, we put aside the idea that God knows best. And, and really... If God truly created us, which I believe he did, he created each one of us, and he knows us better than anyone else, then following his plan for our lives and how to, how to live out um, our relationships and all of those things, wouldn't he know best? And, and that's, what, that's what this is all about. And in the first part here, um, the author of Psalm 119 says, um, we walk in integrity integrity brings about joy and integrity is about people always knowing what they're going to get with us. Who are we going to be? Integrity is being the same person in good times and bad times. Um, really it comes down to our yes being yes and our no being no. Um, integrity is, is an assurance that what people see is what they get. Integrity is, is a great gift that God gives us when, when we follow him. Um, and, and in that, when that integrity, when we follow God, certain decisions are already made. Jerry talked a little bit about this in his, his sermon. Um, there are certain decisions that we don't have to make. We don't have to make over and over and over again. And, and some of the, you know, uh, honesty. I, I never have to make the decision whether I'm going to be honest or not. Well, I take that back. I do have to make the decision. I just know what the right answer is. I don't have to wonder, is this one of those situations where I should lie? There's never a situation where I should lie. Honesty is something that God has for me and wants for me. Service, I'm to serve others. I'm not to be a Lord. You know, um, God sent his son as a man and he came to serve us. Um, I am to, to be the same. I am to be the same. So, so um I always serve. It's not a decision. Should I serve or should I? No, I should serve. It's a decision I don't have to make. Being kind. Kindness, you know. Um, God is love and, and love is patient and love is kind. Um, I don't have to decide whether I should be kind or not. Again, sometimes I have to make that decision, but I know what the right answer is. I am called to be kind. That is what God has for me. Forgiving. I'm called to be forgiving. Um, I don't question the, the idea, do I, um, do I forgive that person or not? The question is, is how? How do I forgive? Um, see, those are the decisions I don't have to make every day. I don't, I don't go through life saying, how do I treat this person? How do I treat that person? I already know how I'm supposed to treat people. And so I start from the same place with every person. And um, it frees up my um, energies to do other things than making those decisions. 
Joy, listen, joy becomes a state of being when we know where we're going. If I know where I'm headed, then, then the journey, I can find joy in the journey, no matter what's happening in the journey, no, whether it's a trial or it's a triumph or whatever. If I know where I'm going and I'm headed in that direction, I'm pushing towards that, um, I can find joy in the journey. The journey is misery when you don't know where you're going. Um, I can remember a time in my life where I had no, I had no vision. I had no idea where I was going and I was just a miserable person. I was a miserable person because I, I didn't know where I was going. The moment I could define where I wanted to go, all of a sudden the journey was joyful. I could find joy in the journey. Um, when we set our hearts on God, his, his promises take on new meaning. They take on a deeper meaning. So as I live my life with integrity, as I trust in the promises of God, um, those promises mean more and more to me every step of the way. They become real. They become more real. They become more tangible. Um, and I can live my life because the decisions have been made. I know where I'm headed. I know who I'm going to be. And I can find joy in that integrity. Um, in verse 2, it says, Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for, um, for him with all their hearts. Obedience. Um, obedience is uh, has become a, a bad word in our in in our culture. Um, you know, only dogs are obedient. No, we are to be obedient to God's word. Um, but listen, when it comes to God's word, the only thing you can be obedient to is what you know. If I don't know something, I can't be obedient into to it. And so that's that's that second part of that verse. We search out God with all our hearts, um, and as we get to know God. Obedience becomes easier. See, obedience comes out of relationship, not the law. If, if you live your life according to the law and you're obedient to the law, it becomes a burden. It becomes a, a chokehold on us. Um, obedience is supposed to come out of relationship. You know, I have, I have four kids and I expect my children to be obedient. I, I, I give them um, limitations and I give them um, guidelines to go to and I expect them to follow them not because they're afraid of what I might do to them but because I love them and they love me it's out of that relationship that my children are to be obedient um, you know when it comes to a husband and wife we are obedient to each other not because there's some rule in place but because we have a relationship Obedience comes out of relationship, and the more you know God, the easier it is um, to be obedient. The more I know God, the more I get to know God, the easier it is for me to become obedient. And look, and, and it, it, in that part where it says, search, search for him with all their hearts, with all their, looking for God brings joy. Everyday life, we need to look look for God in everyday life. You know, many times we, we, we're looking just for the miracle. We're looking for, you know, oh, um, unexpected money came in and I got to pay all my bills or what, whatever your miracle is. God healed me of an illness or whatever. That's great. And I believe me, I live for those things. Those things are great. I love when God does the miraculous. It's, it's so much fun to be part of that. But if I'm going to have joy throughout my life, if I'm going to live a joyful life, I've got to find God in the everyday I got to find joy when the sun comes up in the morning and, and, and is shining through the windows and gives me its warmth. Um, you know, when my, my youngest son jumps in my lap and just throws his arms around me and says, can we snuggle, Dad? You know, that's God. That's God. You know, he provided me with a family. My family is a blessing from God. And when I can acknowledge that, everyday things, all of a sudden life becomes more joyful. You know, um, I got to work without someone pulling out in front of me or driving incredibly slow. That, by the way, is a true miracle of God. Um, but we, we need to look for, for God in the everyday things of life. Because when we find him there, then, we can, then he, he becomes part of every 
area of our life, every relationship, every decision we make, because we are looking for Him in the everyday things. We're not just looking for the big stuff. We're not just looking for the miraculous. We're looking for God in the everyday things, and we realize His blessings are poured out on us over and over and over again. And when we realize um, that God is involved in us every moment of every day, our love for Him grows deeper, and we, we, that relationship grows deeper. Um, obedience becomes easier. Our integrity speaks for itself, and life moves on. In, in um, the third verse, it says, um, they do not compromise with evil. They walk only in his paths. Okay, our Christian walk is about no compromise. And when I say no compromise, that doesn't mean we're stiff-necked and we, we disagree with everything everybody says. That's not what I'm, I'm talking about. I'm saying that we don't compromise ourselves with God's word. We, I'm not looking to pick a fight with anybody else. I've got enough issues with me. Um, you know, we, we figure out how to say no to ourselves. You know, for, for the vast majority of us, our biggest enemy is our own flesh. It's a struggle within. It's, it's what we want. It's, it's not, not what the rest of the world wants, but it's what saying no to what we want and saying yes to what God wants. You know, we, we are um, not the way God desi desired us to be. We are not perfect. He created us to be perfect and to live forever. And when sin entered in, we, are, we no longer hold that place. And we all have this sin nature in us and it fights against us. Our flesh is, is, is part of that. And we have to get control of our own flesh. Um, we, it, once we get control of ourselves, once we uh, give ourselves to God and say, okay, God, I will follow your word, then, then our flesh becomes obedient to us, not us obedient to our, our flesh. Evil always starts out with small requests or compromises. A um, little quick thing, eyes before action. Eyes before action. When it comes to temptation, when it, become, when it comes to not following God, our eyes, our flesh, wants it before we ever make an action. That's why we, we talk about so often um, surrounding ourselves with good people, godly people, um, not viewing TV shows or movies that... that um, glorify things that aren't godly because once once it's in there our brain begins to process it and our flesh begins to desire it eyes before action we need to become people who keep our eyes on christ not our flesh not what the word world has for us you know um Adultery. We'll just use that one. No one wakes up one morning and says, hey, I think today's a great day to have, you know, go commit adultery. It doesn't work that way. Well, it starts out with you begin to look at other people. And then you begin to look at other people with sexual thoughts attached to them. And then you begin to flirt. And then you have a little bit of conversation here, a little conversation there. You know, eyes before action. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a place where you never thought you would be. Every sin starts there. Every sin starts between your ears and then comes from there. It starts in our minds. Eyes be um, His path is always discernible if we seek him. Go back to that idea where you can only, you can only be obedient to what you know. You, you can only follow a path that, that you have been shown. And, and since God created us and he created the path, we have to seek him to find the path um, that, that, that he has for us. Things get confusing when we let our human thinking outweigh God's thinking. The moment we think we know what's better for us, we're in trouble. You know, I've had that conversation many times where, where, where people say, well, yeah, well, that's good for you, but for me... I'm going to do this. Okay, you can do that. That's fine. But I'm saying, I'm not trying to imply rules that, my rules on you. I'm saying, this is what God's word says. And when we violate God's word, it's never good for us. Never. Can there be joy in sin for a season? Well, of course. That's why sin is so um, appealing. There is a season of joy in it. 
but the regret goes on and on. Um, the moment we think we know what's better for us than, than, than what God knows, we're in trouble. And that's where we go. When we allow human thinking to outweigh God's thinking, that, that, and it goes across the border in relationships, um, in, in business, in, in the way we treat our children, in the way we treat our spouses, uh, every area of our lives, if we violate God's word, we're in trouble. We're allowing our thinking to outweigh God's thinking. We've got to be careful with all those things. If we want to live in joy, we've got to be people of integrity, people of obedience, and people who don't compromise with their flesh. We're in control. I hope you have a great time. I hope the, the uh, challenge questions truly challenge you and that you have a good discussion on how to live a life of joy. Everybody, everybody wants to live that life of joy. I hope this, this study has helped you on that path. God bless, and we'll see you next time.